Listen up, Crossroads youth. Today we have another lesson on the lake. Today's lesson is the parable of the farmer planting seed. Jesus begins with, Listen, and he ends his parable with, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So let's head on over to the field and hear what Jesus has to say about the kingdom of God. In today's lesson, Jesus' pulpit is a boat. The name of this lesson is, Can I Receive This Seed? Here Jesus spoke in parables to the multitude. Do you remember what a parable is? A parable is a familiar story which helps us understand spiritual truths. The word parable comes from the idea of to throw or to sit alongside of. We will see this today as Jesus uses a truth of living set alongside a spiritual truth. By listening to parables, this tempts the hearer to listen to something familiar to them, to draw close, to listen to something they know something about, such as farming. Then later, if they wanted to share what Jesus had to say, they could remember about the farmer and his seeds. But if they wanted to share truth about the kingdom of God, then they would have to take some time to really listen and to follow Jesus and spend time with him in order to really begin to understand. This is what produces the heart to receive. This kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. The disciples thought it was going to be an earthly kingdom. So they did not start out with ears to hear. Let's read the story beginning with Mark 4, chapter 3. Jesus says, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered it across his field, some of the feed, seed fell on a footpath. And the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying, underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. So they produced no grain. Other seed fell on fertile soil and they sprouted and grew and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much has been planted. Then he said, listen, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Later when Jesus was alone with the 12 disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him what the parable meant. He replied, you are permitted to know, to understand the secret of the kingdom of God. But I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? Before we, read, before we continue reading, we do need to know the farmer is Jesus. The word of God is the seed. In Jesus' day, they spread the seed, then they plowed the soil. You are that soil. I pray you know or will know which soil you are in this lesson. 
Others will know what soil you are too as you journey through this life as well. And you are responsible to keep your soil fertile, your heart fertile. Let's read on. The farmer plants seeds by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. Listen up, you need to hear this. Satan is a real enemy. If you only hear and not receive what God says, Satan will snatch it away. Our dog Spot has made a footpath in our yard. He has been with us for eight years. He likes to stay on the same hard path over and over. He never changes. He comes from the back where his house is and he travels up beside our house to go to the front every time. Well, Jesus knew there would be people who would hear the word of God but having hearts that are just hard, like this uh, footpath that Spot made, never changing, just a hard heart, not wanting to get off that path. No heart change, no new direction. If they had hearts to receive the word, they could have chased the birds away or Satan away. James 4, 7 says, so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stay close to God, young people, by drawing close to him. Resist the devil so repentance and faith will come. It's your choice. You can resist him and make him leave or remain unfruitful and miss out on what God has for you. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they didn't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. It's one thing to start out with God, but it's another thing to continue. Here they had the message of God and immediately received it with joy, but it was short-lived. Just like here in this parable, the growth came really quick. But due to, under, to the rocks underneath, there was no moisture. So in the thin soil, the sun scorched it. Like I said, until it was tilled or plowed, they didn't know what kind of harvest until the plant came up. When the plowing begins in your heart, after receiving his word in your life, there will be times of trouble, which causes uneasiness, maybe some frustrations because you thought this was going to be an easy life. Maybe you started out pretty good, excited to know Jesus at camp, or maybe you met him at convention. Even our class time when you were excited about what God was doing and what he was saying. Well, we have to know that we've all done this, that when temptation comes, we turn away from God. The growth will be lost. We just assume as we begin to follow Jesus, it's a clear, easy path. We want everybody every day to love us, and we want every day to be enjoyable. But difficulties will come. Jesus said it would. The good news is the Lord is always with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. You are to cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. You also have a church family that will walk with you, pray with you, listen to you. You're not alone. Do what God says, no matter the difficulties you face. He is faithful to complete the work he started in you. If you will surrender to his ways and not yours, he is true joy and peace. And so full of love for you, you will never walk alone. Mm. Philippians 1 6 says, Be confident of this, that he who began a work in you, a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We must be in the flow of the Holy Spirit to keep our souls quenched from the dryness and heat of the enemy of our souls. 
The seed that fell on the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly this message is crowded out by the worries of this life, by the lure of wealth and the desires for other things, so no fruit is produced. They didn't know there were thorns there until the thorns grew up with the plants and choked them so that they could not produce. The plant was grown, but no fruit. Here is the divided heart. I want Jesus and I want my things too. Are you happy with what God has for you at this time in your life? Or do you keep reaching for more? What are your thoughts always on? Well, the thorns do three things. They crowd out the word of God by worries, the worries of life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things. Jesus' word gets choked out if your focus is not on him. Then you are not in fertile soil. You have not really tasted and seen that he is good. He is better than anything this life could offer. The seeds that fell on the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much has been planted. This seed has fallen mm. on fertile soil. No doubt it was the right spot for the fruit was seen. We are to listen and to obey. That's what brings the fruit. I thought of a children's song as I was doing this lesson. I used to do this with preschoolers, but it, I thought it'd be good for us too. The words are, I like the Bible. I like the Bible because I read it and I do it. I read it and I do it. I obey what I have heard. I'm a doer of God's word because I like the Bible. We would always shout, do it. When we talked about it, we'd say we read it and we do it. God's word is coming to you now. Are you listening to what he is saying in this lesson? When the word is preached at church, are you ready to hear and obey? When you open his word, are you ready to hear and obey? We are to prepare our hearts so that we can hear his word and do what he tells us. To understand and obey that his kingdom has come and that we can be a part of it if we really hear and accept what he has to say. Stay close to Jesus. Listen for him to speak to you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. As you grow in God and do his will, the fruit comes. You'll begin to reach out to others as this fruit begins to grow in you. So begin now to ask the Holy Spirit to help you daily to share your faith. A wonderful way of sharing your faith is to give your testimony at school, in your neighborhood, or with lost family members. The Holy Spirit will help you share Jesus. He will help you share your faith and give you the words to say. And remember, some will always, some of your words will always fall on good ground. Although you may not see the fruit for years, you keep sharing Jesus and stay in fellowship with him. George Wood was our former general superintendent of the Assemblies of God. He shared a story about some missionary friends of his. They served 30 years in a South American country and single-handedly translated the entire Bible into the language of the largest people group in that land. But in the beginning, they didn't see any fruit because they didn't have any friends in the village to help them learn the language. The witch doctor told everyone not to talk to them. Even their home church cut off missionary support because they did not see quick results. After two years, they made their first friend. He taught them the language and then the harvest came. So be encouraged if you've already witnessed. You just keep doing what the Lord tells you to do. Here's a good start to sharing your testimony. First of all, ask God to give you opportunities to share. And then pray for God's wisdom. 
share how you came to know the Lord and share what your focus was mainly on before you came to know him and how it is now. What is your life like now? The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say if you ask. Let the Lord lead you even to that opportunity to share Jesus with them and maybe they will receive him as Savior and Lord as well. One more thing I want to encourage you with, young people. I know I don't see you all here at church because some of you work and some of you don't have an opportunity to come every week. But my desire is that before you go to bed at night, that you get a, get the scripture, get a scripture from the Lord and meditate on it. Also, would like for you to go to our church website and listen to the sermons. If you have missed some sermons, I would... My desire is that you go and listen. Your scriptures are in there that you did weekly. Listen to this whole scripture. Listen to the worship song. And then as you are uh, laying there before going to sleep, just listen to the sermon. You guys are in most of them, and this will truly bless you. Be fertile ground. Do this. Listen to the word of God. Our pastor has been given a word from the Lord for you and for all of us for this season of our life. Well, uh, something I wanted to share when Mr. Barry would get ready to leave the house every morning, he would say, well, the time has come, the walrus said. It was a little poem he memorized in uh, school, and I would always say, no, stay longer. Well, young people, the time has come have ears to hear so that you can follow Jesus and have a soft, pliable, and surrendered heart. What is this soil? I hope you understand that it's your heart. May your heart be soft, ready to receive everything the Lord has to say to you daily with an alert mind and a thankful heart so that you will be fruitful 30, 60, 100 times as much as you have received from the Lord yourself. May God give you many opportunities to speak about Jesus. May he give you the boldness to proclaim his name as you should, making the most of every opportunity. May your conversations be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone God puts in your path. That comes from Colossians 4, 2 through 6. Well, I have a little homework assignment for you between now and Sunday. I would like you to go back to Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20, and use the New Living Translation, the NLT version. And I want you to write down every time you hear Jesus say the word, here. And then write that number down. And the second part, just for fun, I want you to go through these slides and look at all in the soil around me. Look at all the little critters there. And I want you to write down each one. Now, you can only count the worm one time. But write down each one in this PowerPoint just for fun. Bring me that Sunday and you will receive a prize. Last thing, look around you. Which soil are you in? Well, my desire is that you're the fourth one here, that your feet are soft and dirty because you are in the fertile ground. Your heart is, is fertile and that you love the Lord with all your heart and you're seeking him daily. Be blessed, Crossroads Youth. We love you.